This quick guide video provides an overview of how to interpret an OVEMP recording. Clinicians have different preferences on how to interpret the data obtained from OVEMP recordings. Some like to collect their own normative data from a group of individuals with normal vestibular function and compare the clinical results against this data. Others prefer to interpret the OVEMP data against published data from normative studies. There are several components of the OVEMP response which can be interpreted by evaluating the amplitude and the latency. Firstly, it is important to determine whether a response has been recorded or not. Please note, an incorrect electrode placement can result in the response being recorded from a null point and an absent response may be displayed when normal vestibular function may exist. Next, one can look at the amplitude of the N1P1 response. If this is abnormally high, then this can suggest the presence of superior semicircular canal dehiscence. Some clinicians will recommend that the VEMP threshold is found in such a case. The most robust measurement to interpret when considering the OVEMP is the N1P1 amplitude ratio. This measurement compares the amplitude of the N1P1 response of both the left and right ears. If you have set the waveforms to be VEMP partners, then this is calculated automatically by the Eclipse. A study by Piker et al. in 2011 suggests that if the amplitude ratio is greater than 33%, then this is indicative of pathology. This figure is consistent with other studies looking at amplitude ratio. The latency of the N1 and P1 can also be measured. Latency is generally seen as the least important parameter to assess in OVEMP interpretation but extended latencies can be seen in patients with pathologies affecting the central nervous system. This concludes this quick guide video on how to interpret the OVEMP response.